In the last video, we set up our application with the user component, actions, and read user. In this video, let's learn how to make a GET request to an API endpoint and display the fetched data in the UI. Now, there are two packages that we need to install. The first one is Axios, which will be used to make GET requests to the API endpoint. The second package is Redux Thunk. Redux Thunk will allow us to define asynchronous action creators in our application. The first step is to install the two packages. So in the terminal, run the command npm install axios redux thunk. The second step is to apply the Redux Thunk middleware to our Redux store. For that, let's head over to the file store.js. At the top, let's import Redux Thunk. So import Thunk from Redux Thunk. Then we pass it to the apply middleware function. Now we don't really need the logger middleware, but I'll just leave it anyway. So logger comma thunk. Our app has two middleware. Now the final step is to define our async action creator. Let's go over to the file useractions.js. Over here, I'm going to define a function called fetch users. This is an action creator. Now the three action creators we have defined in the previous video all return an action. But the fetch users action creator is special. By making use of the thunk middleware, fetch users will instead return another function. So instead of returning an action, we return a function. And what is special about this function is that it doesn't have to be pure. It is allowed to have side effects such as async API calls. And this function also receives the dispatch method as its argument. Now, let's see how to make an Axios request and dispatch the necessary actions. At the top, make sure you import Axios. Import Axios from Axios. For the request, we are going to be using JSON placeholder. If you scroll down to resources and click on slash users, we get the URL endpoint for our get request. So back in VS Code, within our function, axios.get and we paste in the URL. If the request was successful, we get back the response. response.data is the array of users. So const users is equal to response.data. If the request failed, we get back an error. Here, error.message gives us the description of the error. So const error message is equal to error.message. So we have made our Axios request. Now we dispatch the appropriate actions. Before we fire off our API call, we dispatch fetch users request. This will basically set loading to true. When we get the response, we are going to dispatch fetch users success, passing in the list of users. What is the list of users? It is response.data. So when the request is successful, we dispatch the fetch users success action, which stores users in our state. 
over here. Similarly, if the request failed, we dispatch fetch user's error, sorry, fetch user's failure, passing in the error message. Now, the final step is to subscribe our user container component to the Redux store and display the list of users. So in user container.js, first let's make the necessary imports. We need use effect from React. We need connect from React Redux. And finally, we need fetch users action creator from user actions. All right, next we define map state to props and map dispatch to props. I'm going to quickly copy paste the code. So const map state to props accepts state, accesses state.user and stores it in user data. Similarly, map dispatch to props receives dispatch as a parameter. Fetch users is the key which basically dispatches the fetch users action creator. To be able to make use of these, we need to connect them to our component. So export default connect map state to props, map dispatch to props, and we connect it with user container. Next, we're going to dispatch the action in use effect. So over here, use effect, an arrow function, and within the body, fetch users. And what is fetch users? We destructure it from our props. And we also need to specify an empty dependency array so that fetch users is dispatched only once. Now that we have dispatched the API call, we need to render the list of users. So return if user data dot loading, which means we need to destructure user data. We're going to simply render loading text. If the user data is not loading, which means the API request is completed, we check if there was an error. So user data dot error. If there was an error, we render whatever is the error message. User data dot error. If there was no error, we successfully fetched the list of users, in which case I'm going to add an h2 tag that says user list and then div tag where we map through the list of users. So user data and user data dot users and user data dot users dot map we're going to get a user which we are going to render as a paragraph tag user dot name now i am hoping for a positive scenario but you might want to add additional checks to see if the users are actually present in your array if i now open the terminal and run the application we still see the old UI because in app.js, let me comment out cakes and ice creams and include user container. If we go back, you should see the expected output in the browser. So this is pretty much how you fetch and display data in a React Redux application. First, you add the thunk middleware. What this allows is for an action creator to return a function instead of an action. The function now can perform side effects such as fetching data. The function also can dispatch regular actions based on the response.
These actions will then be handled by the reducer which updates the Redux state. When the state is updated, the component which has subscribed to the state changes will receive the updated state which can then be used in the JSX. Now this is one of the more common patterns in a React Redux application. For practice, I would also suggest you try to make a POST request to one of the same JSON placeholder APIs. Alright, with that, we come to the end of the series on React Redux. I hope you now have a good understanding of what is Redux, the different concepts in Redux, and how it integrates with React. For further reading, I would recommend you take a look at Redux Axios middleware and Redux Persist NPM packages. They might be useful depending on the requirements for your application. Well then, thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and until next time, take care.